What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about major scales. But before we dive into major scales, let's review the fundamental building blocks of music, and that is half steps and whole steps. Understanding this concept is gonna be critical to understanding what makes a major scale a major scale. So we've got two primary building blocks, and that's half steps and whole steps. A half step is the smallest possible interval between two notes in music. So between C and C sharp, we've got a half step. These are the closest possible notes. There's nothing in between them. But between C and D, I have a whole step because they're separated by two half steps. Half step, half step, whole step. Okay? Another example of a half step would be from B to C. There are two white notes next to each other, but there's no notes between them, so they are a half step apart. But B and C sharp are separated by one note, so these two notes are a whole step apart. Half steps versus whole steps. So when we come to talking about major scales, there's actually a formula that makes every major scale sound like a major scale. You're probably familiar with what a major scale sounds like. We like to categorize music into scales because it helps us understand sort of where home is. So in the case of the C major scale, which I just played, home is C or Do. So today we're gonna break down exactly what makes the major scale sound this way. And to do this, we're gonna write out all the letters of the major scale. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You'll remember about the musical alphabet that there's only seven letters in the musical alphabet. We go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we start over at A. Now to understand what makes a major scale sound like a major scale, let's look at the half steps and whole steps between each of these letters. So between C and D, do we have a half step or a whole step? Well, C and D are separated by one note, so this is a whole step. What about between D and E? Again, these two notes are separated with one note in between them. So this is gonna be a whole step. What about between E and F? Well, these notes are right next to each other. There's no note in between them. So E and F are actually separated by a half step. So, so far with our major scale, we've got whole, whole, half. Now from F to G, once again, there's a note in between these, so we've got a whole step here. From G to A, same thing, there's a note in between, so from G to A is a whole step. From A to B, once more, there's a note in between here, this black key, and so we've got a whole step. And finally, from B to C, there's no notes in between here. B and C are right next to each other, the smallest possible interval, so we have a half step. So the formula that we get for the major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. We've now figured out the formula that works for every single major scale in all of music. This is the pattern every single time. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. No matter what major scale we're dealing with, always this pattern. So this is gonna be really important when it comes to thinking about accidentals, that is sharps and flats that we add to notes like C sharp or D flat. And you might be wondering why we need them. Sometimes sharps and flats can get really annoying and really confusing and it can be easy to wonder why we even include them in music. Well, there's a really important reason and the reason is that sharps and flats help us maintain this whole, whole, half whole, 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 half pattern. As an example, let's look at the G major scale. So what we're gonna do is actually figure out the notes of the G major scale using the pattern that we just learned. So we know that the G major scale is gonna start on a G and it's going to end on a G. And we also know that the intervals are gonna be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So now looking at the piano, let's see if we can figure out what all the notes of the G major scale are. So we need a whole step from G 
to the next note. So that's going to bring us to A. Now we need another whole step from A to the next note. Well, here would be a half step, so let's go up one more to B. Now we need a half step. So from B up a half step is going to bring us to the next closest note, which is C. Now we need to go up a whole step from C. This is a half step, so up a whole step is going to bring us to D. Then up a whole step to E. Now we need to go up a whole step. From E to F brings us to a half step. So we need to go from E, skipping a note, up to this note. Do we call this note F sharp, as in the note right above F? Or do we call this note G flat, as in the note right below G? When we've got two spellings for the same note, we call them enharmonic. And we're about to look at the reason why we might name a note one of two different names. Now, just for argument's sake, let's call this note G flat. So now we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, G flat, G. I'm sure it can be pretty easy to figure out why G flat might not be the best name for this note. Because right here, we don't have an F and we've got two Gs. This is going to be really confusing later on, especially when we start to work with key signatures. Key signatures are sort of like a shorthand to help us easily identify the notes that need to go in a particular key. And G flat G is going to make things really confusing. So instead of G flat G, we want to have one of every letter. So we're going to replace G flat with F sharp. So now our key sounds like this. If I didn't use the F sharp and I just used a normal F, we'd have this. So accidentals, like sharps and flats, are super important because they help us maintain this whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half pattern. Without them, we don't have major scales. Hopefully now you also understand the reason that we have N harmonics, that is where a note like F sharp means the same thing as G flat. Because in this case, we need an F sharp to complete the musical alphabet, but in another case, we might need a G flat instead. So that's an intro to major scales. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's the pattern every time the major scale formula.